Good day everyone. We are assigned to discuss chapter 10, Corrosion and Degradation of Materials, prepared by Bernardo Hanna Clarice, Galvan Michel, and me, Saliri Jonas. First, let us know what is corrosion and degradation of materials. Corrosion or degradation involves deterioration of material when exposed to an environment resulting in the loss of that material. The most common case being the corrosion of metals and steel by water. The changes brought about by corrosion include weight loss or gain, material loss, or changes in physical and mechanical properties. So, ang pagkasira ng material ay nasasangkot kapag madalas itong pabago-bago kung saan nakalagay sa hindi angkop na kapaligiran, na, narig, na nagre-resulta sa pagkawala ng material na iyon. Ang pinakakaraniwang kaso ay ang kaagnasan ng mga metal at bakal kapag nasa tubig. Why study corrosion and degradation of materials? With the knowledge of the types of and an understanding of the mechanism and causes of corrosion and degradation, it is possible to take measures to prevent them from occurring. For example, we may change the nature of the environment. Select a material that is relatively non-reactive and or protect the material from appreciable deterioration. So, mapaprotektahan natin ang material mula sa napapansin na pagkasira if mabibigyan natin ito ng pansin or maaagapan natin ito ng maaga. Here are the topics under chapter 10. Corrosion of metals, electrochemical consideration, corrosion rates, Prediction of corrosion rates, passivity, environmental effects, form of corrosion, corrosion environments, corrosion prevention, oxidation, corrosion of ceramic materials, degradation of polymers, swelling and dissolution, band rupture, and weathering. First topic under chapter 10 is corrosion of metals. What is corrosion? Corrosion is a serious issue from, for construction and safety. Corrosion is the deterioration of a metal as a result of chemical reactions between it and the surrounding environment. Both the type of metal and the environmental conditions, particularly gases that are in contact with the metal, determine the form and rate of deterioration. Do all metals corrode? All metals can corrode. Some, like pure iron, corrode quickly. Stainless steel, however, which combine iron and other alloys, is slower to corrode and is therefore used more frequently. All small groups of metals, called the noble metals, are much less reactive than others. As a result, they corrode rarely. They are in fact the only metals that can be found in nature, in their pure form. The noble metals, not surprisingly, are often very valuable. They include rhodium, palladium, silver, platinum, and gold. Types of corrosion. There are many different reasons for metal corrosion. Some can be avoided by adding alloys to a pure metal. Other can be prevented by a careful combination of metals or management of the metal's environment. So first is general attack corrosion. This very common form of corrosion attacks the entire surface of a metal structure. It is caused by chemical or electrochemical reactions. While general attack corrosion can cause a metal to fail, it is also known as predictable issue. As a result, it is possible to plan for and manage general attack corrosion. Yung common na nasisira ay nagsisimula sa buong ibabaw ng isang estrukturang metal. Ito ay sanhi ng mga reaksyon halimbawa na chemical. Localized corrosion. These corrosion attacks only portion of a metal structure. There are three types of localized corrosion. First is pitting, the creation of small holes in the surface of a metal. 
Previous corrosion. Corrosion that occurs on stagnant locations such as those found under gaskets. Filiform corrosion. Corrosion that occurs when water gets under or coating such as paint. Galvanic corrosion. Can occur when two different metals are located together in a liquid electrolyte. Example, salt water. In essence of one metal molecules are drawn toward the other metal leading to corrosion in only one of the two metals. Environmental cracking. When environmental conditions are stressful enough, some metal can begin to crack, fatigue, or become brittle and weakened. These are the examples of metal corrosion. Corrosion is defined as the destructive and unintentional attack of metal. It is electrochemical and begins at the surface. Problem of metallic corrosion. Economic term, 5% of an industrialized nation's income is spent on prevention and maintenance or replacement of product loss. Example, the rusting of automobile pa body panels radiator and exhaust components for corrosions to occur certain conditions must be present there are five first a potential difference between the cathode and the anode to drive the the reaction to an anodic reaction three an equivalent cathode reaction four an electrolyte for the internal circuit and glass an external circuit where electrons can travel. Electrochemical considerations form for a metallic material the corrosion process is normally electrochemical in nature. This means that there is a transfer of electrons from one species to another. Electrochemical corrosion process. The electrons generated from each metal atom that is oxidized must be transferred to and become a part of chemical process called reduction reaction. Oxidation. When metal atoms characteristically lose or give up electrons. Reduction. When a metal takes the electrons that are being transferred, reducing its charge. Metal corrosion involves oxidation reduction. Reaction in which the metal is lost by dissolution at the anode. The electrons travel to the cathode where the reduction takes place, while move through a conducting solution or electrolyte. A positive and a negative pole called the cathode and the anode respectively are thereby created with a current flow between them thus the process of corrosion is basically electrochemical. Sometimes polarization of the anodic and the cathodic reaction must be taken into consideration. Polarization is a change in equilibrium electromagnetic field of a cell due to current flow. It has been reported that polarization may retard corrosion, as in the accumulation of unreacted hydrogen on the cathode. Overall electrochemical reaction. An overall electrochemical reaction must be consist of at least one oxidation and one reduction, and will be the sum of them. The individual oxidation and reduction reactions are termed half reactions. The total rate of oxidation must equal to the total rate of reduction. Or all electrons generated through oxidation must be consumed by reduction. Electrode potentials. If the iron and copper electrodes are connected electrically, Reduction will occur for copper at the expense of the oxidation of iron. Galvanic couple. Two metals electrically connected in a liquid electrolyte wherein one metal becomes an anode and corrodes, while the other acts as a cathode. 
an electric potential or voltage will exist between the two cell hubs and its magnitude can be determined if a voltmeter is connected in the external circuit. Standard hydrogen reference half cell, standard electromotive force series. It is generated by coupling to the standard hydrogen electrode, standard half cell of various metals and ranking them according to measured voltage. Influence of concentration and temperature on cell potential, galvanic series. This represents the relative reactivities of a number of metals and commercial alloys in seawater. Corrosion rates. Corrosion rates are very important design parameter for engineers because corrosion can destroy process piping and damage equipment if not accounted for properly. Kaya before gawin ang isang structure, Marami pang proseso at isa sa trabaho or obligasyon ng mga engineer lalo na ang mga civil at mechanical engineers. The corrosion rate is calculated as the rate of material removal as a consequence of chemical reaction. We can calculate the corrosion penetration rate or CPR which is the actual rate of removal of material. If corrosion is not calculated correctly, Major processes can be completely shut down to fix a core road section of the process, which will cause a company to incur significant cost. According to the U.S. Press Department of Energy, corrosion does, does more economic damage than the effect of all natural disasters combined. Corrosion costs industry approximately 5% of the gross national product. The importance of corrosion rates. The rate of material removal as a consequence of chemical reactions is an important design parameter for engineers because corrosion can destroy process piping and damage equipment if not accounted for properly. We can calculate the corrosion rate as either corrosion penetration rate or CPR, thickness as Thickness loss over time or as rate in molecules over m squared minus s. Based on the current density through material, the rate of corrosion is the speed at which any given metal deteriorates in a specific environment. The rate or speed is dependent upon environmental condition as well as the type of condition of the metal. In order to calculate the rate of corrosion, the following information must be collected. Weight loss, the, in, the decrease in metal weight during reference period time. Density, density of the metal. Area, total initial surface area of the metal piece. Time, the length of the reference time period. Why corrosion rates matter? Corrosion rates determine the lifespan of metal-based structure. This variable dictates the choices of metals used for different purposes and in different environments. The rate of corrosion also determines the maintenance requirement for structure. Example, a metal bridge in Florida may require more frequent maintenance than a similar structure in drier location. Example, a metal a metal bridge in Mexico. Naka, nakadepende din kasi sa lokasyon o yung lugar kung saan nakalagay yung materiales. Kaya naman malaki talaga yung impact ng environment pagdating sa mga material. Prediction of corrosion rates. It is important to be able to accurately predict corrosion rates in order to adequately protect equipment. The most common prediction method use polarization data. This is based on the overvoltage or displacement of an electrode's potential form its equilibrium value. The potentials 
of the two short-circuited electrodes are not at the values determined from the standard electromotive force series because the system is a no equilibrium one. The displacement of each electrode potential from its equilibrium value is termed polarization and the magnitude of its displacement is the overvoltage. Overvoltage is expressed in terms of plus or minus volts relative to the equilibrium potential. Two types of polarization, activation polarization and concentration polarization. Activation polarization refers to the condition wherein the reaction rate is controlled by the one step in the series that occurs at the slowest rate. The term activation is applied to this type of polarization because an activation energy barrier is associated with this slowest rate limiting step. Concentration polarization exists when the reaction rate is limited by diffusion in the solution. When the reaction is slow and or the concentric concentration of H plus is high, there is always an adequate supply of hydrogen ions available in the solution at the region near the electrode interface. It generally occurs only for reduction reactions because for oxidation. There, there is virtually an unlimited supply of metal atoms at the corroding electrode interface. Both concentration and activation polarization are possible for reduction reactions. Passivity Some norm normally active metals and alloys under pa particular environmental conditions lost their chemical reactivity and become extremely inert. This phenomenon termed passivity is displaced by chromium, iron, nickel, titanium, and many of their alloys. At relatively low potential values within the active region, the behavior is linear and it is for normal metals. With increasing potential, the current density suddenly decreases to a very low value that remains independent of potential. This is termed as passive region. In the figure, this is the schematic polarization curve for a metal that displays an active and passive transition. Finally, at even higher potential values, the current density again increases with potential in the transpassive region. Influence of corrosion environment Curve 1 intersects the oxidation polarization curve in the active region at point A, yielding a corrosion current density IA. The intersection of curve 2 at point B is in the passive region and at current density IB. The corrosion rates of metal M in solution 1 is greater than in solution 2, since IA is greater than IB, and the rate is proportional to current density. Environmental effects Metal corrosion is greatly affected by its environment. An environmental effect is the result of environmental impacts on human health and welfare. Ang epekto nito ay sa kapaligiran ay may epekto rin sa kalusugan at kapakanan ng mga tao. Halimbawa yung mga pollution na ngayon ay na-experience na natin. For instance, higher temperatures and higher velocity or motion of a metal correlates with higher corrosion rates. Velocity refers are generally known as erosion corrosion. This is caused by relative motion of the metal or its environment. Temperature and corrosion. On the left side of the picture, cooler temperatures cause less corrosion, while on the right side of the picture, higher temperatures result in accelerated corrosion. Some of the effects of corrosion include a significant deterioration of natural and historic monuments.
Air pollution causes corrosion, and it's becoming worse worldwide. One of the consequences of air pollution that is seldom talked about is the effect of corrosion on man-made materials throughout the world. As air pollution levels have risen in industrialized countries, so too has there been a corresponding increase in corrosion levels. But this doesn't just affect man-made monuments. It also affects things closer to human to homes such as vehicles, barbecue grills, outdoor furniture, and household tools. Corrosion also degrades important infra infrastructures such as steel reinforced highways, electrical towers, parking structure, and bridges. In short, corrosion is a subject that bears further investigation so that you can understand how this hidden degradation impacts your life. So sa madaling salita, ang kaagnasan ay isang paksa na mayroong karagdagang pagsisiyasat upang maunawaan natin kung paano nakakaapekto ito sa mga bagay na nasa paligid natin. Fluid Velocity In most instances, increasing fluid velocity enhances the rate of corrosion due to erosive effects. Temperature For the great majority of corrosion situations, the rates rise with increasing temperature. Composition In many situations, increasing the concentration of the corrosive spe species produce a more rapid rate of corrosion. For materials capable of passivation, raising the corrosive content may result in an active to passive transition with a considerable reduction in corrosion. Cold work. A cold work metal is non susceptible to corrosion than the same material in an annealed state. Forms of corrosion. Uniform attack Uniform attack is the most common form of corrosion. It is normally characterized by a chemical or electrochemical reaction, which proceeds uniformly over the entire exposed surface or over a large area. The metal becomes thinner and eventually fails. Example, a piece of steel or zinc immersed in dilute sulfuric acid will normally dissolve at a uniform rate over its entire surface. A sheet iron roof will show essentially the same degree of rusting over its entire outside surface. So sabi dito, ang uniform attack daw is the most common form of corrosion. Karaniwan daw itong nalalaman at nailalarawan sa pamamagitan ng electrochemical na magkapareho. Nakalagay nga dito yung example ng uniform attack. Uniform attack siya kap Pag yung isang piraso ng bakal or sink ay nahuhulog sa dilute sulfuric acid, ay natutunaw ang poong ibabaw nito. So basically, uniform attack or general over all corrosion represents the greatest destruction of metals. Kumbaga, siya yung nag-represent sa pagkasira ng mga metal. Galvanic or two-metal corrosion A potential difference usually exists between two dissimilar metals when they are immersed in a corrosive or conductive solution. If these metals are placed in contact or otherwise electrically connected, this potential difference produces electron flow between them. Corrosion of the less corrosion resistant metal is usually increased and attack of the more resistant materials is decreased as compared with the behavior of these metals when they are not in contact. So, yung galvanic corrosion is also dissimilar metal corrosion or wrongly electrolysis. Tumutukoy naman ito sa corrosion damage. So, bakit nagkakaroon ng corrosion damage? Nagkakaroon ng corrosion damage kapag ang dalawang materials ay hindi magkatulad o pareho at pinagsama sa corrosive electrolyte. So, so ano nga ba yung ano? Those metals nga ba na we should say not used together. Para maiwasan yung corrosion damage, dapat huwag natin, 
Huwag tayong gumamit ng aluminum at stainless steel o huwag natin pagsamahin ang dalawang ito, lalo na kung yung stainless ay kinakalawang na. Doon nagkakaroon ng corrosion damage. Crevice corrosion. Intense localized corrosion frequently occurs within crevices and other shielded areas in on metal surfaces exposed to corro corrosives. This type of attack is usually associated with small volumes of stagnant solution caused by holes, gasket surfaces, lap joints, surface deposits, and crevices under bulb and rivet heads. As a result, this form of corrosion is called crevice corrosion or sometimes deposit or gasket corrosion. So, yung crevice corrosion refers to corrosion in combined spaces to which the access of the working fluid from the environment is limited. These are generally called crevices. So, what causes crevice corrosion? It causes when contact of metals with metals or metals with non-metals. For example, gasket, coupling, and joints. So, paano natin mapiprevent ang crevice corrosion? So, dapat siguraduhin natin na fully drain and dry ang mga assets na na-expose sa tubig or other solution. Pitting Pitting is a form of extremely localized attack that results in holes in the metals. These holes may be small or large in diameter, but in most cases, they are relatively small pits are sometimes isolated or so close together that they look like a rough surface. Generally, a pit may be described as a cavity or hole, with the surface diameter about the same as or less than the depth. So, yung pitting corrosion is a form of extremely localized corrosion that leads to the creation of small holes in the metal. So, ang pitting ay itinuturing na mas mapanganib kaysa sa uniform corrosion damage dahil mas mahirap itong madetect at mapredict. So, what cause pitting corrosion? Nagkukos ito kapag nagkakaroon ng non-metals na materiales sa surface ng metal. In Integranular corrosion. Grain boundary effects are of little or no consequence in most applications or uses of metals. If a metal corrodes, uniform attack results since grain boundaries are usually only slightly more reactive than the matrix. However, under certain conditions, grain interfaces are very reactive and intergranular con corrosions results. Localized attack at and adjacent to grain boundaries with relatively little corrosion of the grains. Is intergranular corrosion the alloys disintegrate, disintegrates grains fall out and or loss its strength. So yung intergranular corrosion naman or also known as intergranular attack ay isang uri ng corrosion kung saan ang boundaries of crystallite ng materiales ay madaling kapitan ng corrosion. What cause of intergranular corrosion? Intergranular corrosion is generally considered to be caused by segregation of impurities at the grain boundaries by depletion of one of the alloying elements in the grain boundaries areas. Selective leaching Selective leaching is the removal of one element from a solid alloy by collision processes. The most common example of selective removal of zinc in brass alloys. Similar processes occur in the al other alloy system in which aluminum, iron, cobalt, chromium, and other elements are removed. Selective leaching is the general term to describe these processes and its use precludes the creation of terms such as dialuminumification, decobaltification, and etc. Parting is a metallurgical term that is sometimes applied but selective leaching is preferred. So yung selective leaching, also known or called dialuing or demeta demetallification, 
parting ad selective corrosion. Isa sang type ng corrosion in some solid solution alloys. Matatawag na selective corrosion kapag yung alloys in which one part is clearly less noble than the other parts of the materials. So how can we prevent selective bleaching? First, select the, mat the metal or alloy that are more resistant and resistant to the yellowing. And second, control the environment to minimize selective bleaching. So basta tandaan lang natin na common example of selective bleaching is disin desensification of selectivity removal of zinc in brasses. Erosion corrosion Erosion corrosion is characterized in appearance by grooves, gullies, ways, rounded holes, and valleys and usually exhibit a directional pattern. In many cases, failures because of erosion corrosion occurs in a relatively short time and they are, uh, they are unexpected largely because evaluation corrosion te tests were run under st static condition or because the erosion effects were not considered. So yung erosion corrosion naman ay karaniwang matatagpuan sa high flow rates or mataas na daloy around the tube or tubo. Mga dulo ng inlet ng tubo o kahit sa mga ano, mga pump impeller Ito ay sanhi ng mga bula na, ng tubig na ginagawa sa isang high speed impeller. At pagkatapos ay magko-collapse o magko-cause ng pit sa ibabaw ng metal or surface. Marami example ng erosion corrosion tulad ng aluminum, lead, stainless steel and carbon steels. So anong pinagkaiba ng erosion sa corrosion? Erosion is a physical process while the other is a chemical. Erosion occurs on the surface of the land while corrosion occurs on the surface of materials like polymers, ceramic, and metals. Stress corrosion cracking Stress corrosion cracking refers to cracking caused by the sim simultaneous presence of tensile stress and a specific corrosive medium. Many investigators have classified all cracking failures occurring in corrosive medium as stress corrosion cracking, including failures due to hydrogen embrittlement. So, yung stress corrosion cracking is the growth of crack formation in a corrosive environment. It can lead to unexpected and sudden failure of normally ductile metal alloys subjected to a tensile stress, especially at elevated temperature. So, how you prevent stress corro corrosion? Pinakauna, dapat avoid the chemical species na nagkakos ng stress corrosion cracking at co control of harness and stress level and use material known not to crack in the specified environment. Corrosion environments. Corrosion may appear in any of three forms. Atmospheric corrosion, galvanic corrosion or stress corrosion cracking atmospheric corrosion describe corrosion that is caused by the chemical actions and compounds in the environment on the surface of the material the most common form is water and water soluble pollutants or substance substances encountered in processing equipment so corrosion environment bakit nga ba mahalaga malaman natin yung kung paano nakaka-apekto ang corrosion sa environment natin syempre di ba unang una dito tayo nakatira so dapat maalagaan natin yung environment natin upang maging safe din tayo tsaka so how does the corrosion affect our environment so sa araw-araw na nakaka-encounter tayo ng form of degradation corrosion causes plant shutdowns waste of valuable resources loss of contamination of product, reducing inefficiency, costly in maintenance, and expensive overdesign. Corrosion prevention There are several cost-effective ways to prevent corrosion, including use non-corrosive metals such as stainless steel or aluminum, make sure the metal surface stays clean and dry, use drying agents, Use a coating or barrier product such as grease, oil, paint, or 
carbon fiber coating. Lay a layer or backfill, for example, limestones with underground piping. Use a sacrificial anode to provide a cathodic protection system. So, how to prevent corrosion? There are several cost-effective ways to prevent corrosion, including use non-corrosive metals such as stainless steel or aluminum. Make sure na yung mga metal surface ay malinis at tuyo. Tapos use drying agent. So, yun mga yung mga nabanggit ko kanina. So, Oxidation Oxidation occurs when an atom molecule or iron loss one Oxidation is the loss of electrons during a reaction by a molecule atom or iron. Oxidation occurs when the oxidation states of a molecule atom or iron is increased. The opposite process is called reduction, which occurs when there is a gain of electrons or the oxidation states of an atom, molecule, or iron decreases. So, oxidation occurs when an atom molecule or iron losses one or more electrons in chemical reaction. Oxidation doesn't necessarily have anything to do with oxygen. So, example ng oxidation is yung hydrogen and fluorine gas. Magpo-form siya ng hydrofluoric acid or yung H2 plus F2 is equal to 2HF. In this reaction, hydrogen is being oxidized and fluorine is being reduced. Basta note that there is no oxygen anywhere in this reaction. Corrosion of ceramic materials. Corrosion of ceramic and composite materials. Second edition is a primary source of guideline, guidance for the assessment, interpretation, and inhibition of corrosion phenomena. So, itong corrosion of ceramic materials ay isa siyang libro at marami itong edition. Yun nga dito, sa second edition ay makikita mo yung mga primary guidelines of source for us assessment and interpretation. Yung second edition na book covers the fundamentals of corrosion by gases, liquids, and solid of several ceramic materials. Naka-include din dito yung review ng lahat ng current literature mula nung pinablish yung first edition. So basically, corrosion of ceramic composite materials, second edition explains existing corrosion problems and offers an excellent guide to the design and development of corrosion resistantly structure. So, bali, kung gusto mong malamin or mapag-aralan yung mga tungkol sa corrosion, itong second edition ang magandang basahin. Degradation of polymers Polymer degradation is a change in the properties of the polymer such as tensile strength, color, shape, and molecular weight or of a polymer-based product under the influence of one or more environmental factors, such as heat, light, chemicals, or any other applied force. So, yung polymers can degrade by exposure to high temperature or thermal degradation, shear action or mechanical degradation, oxygen ozone, and chemical reaction or chemical degradation, electromagnetic or light-induced degradation, and moisture or hydrolysis so dito man tayo what degradation means the act this is the act or process of damaging or ruining something or the act of threatening someone or something poorly and without respect next is swelling and dissolution when exposed to humid environment, polymers get swelling due to diffuse, diffuse and absorb moisture. It may also involve dissolution of polymers and swelling is considered as partial dissolution. Dissolution involves complete solution of polymer in solvent. So, makikita natin dito sa picture ang iba't ibang stages ng dissolution. Kapag yung isang polymer ay nilagay sa solvent, after a few minutes, magsuswelling na siya. Diyan na humihiwala yung mga chains ng polymers at yung secondary bands ng polymer ay magiging mahina na. At kapag humiwalay na yung mga chains at humina na ang secondary bands, 
Ibig sabihin, nagiging softer and more ductile na ang isang polymer. Yung swelling is a part of partial dissolu- partial of dissolution. So, yung dissolution naman ay kompletong paghalo ng polymer sa solvent. Kumbaga, nag-disperse na or kumalat na yung polymer sa solvent. Weathering. When exposed to outdoor weather, For long periods of time, polymer may get decolored, distort from their original shape. This may be due to many actions, including radiation of the sun, oxidation, etc. So, etong ano, weathering, weathering, may mga factors na nakakapekto dito, tulad ng radiation. Ay. So, halimbawa ng weathering is yung ito, yung yero. Makikita at mapapansin natin kapag bago pa yung yero ay makintab at maganda pa siya. Maganda pa yung quality nito. Pero kapag na-expose na ito sa labas ng matagal na panahon, ay mag-iiba na ang kulay nito at mababago na yung shape nito. Nagkaka- magkakaroon na siya ng mga kalawang dahil sa radiation ng araw, oxidation, at iba pang factors na nakaka-apekto sa katangian physical ng isang bagay. Habang tumatagal yung panahon na naka-expose yung yara sa labas ng, ano, sa labas ng bahay or sa outdoor, ay parami ng parami yung kalawang nito na siya nagre-resulta sa pagkaubos sa pagkabutas nito. Last is yung band rupture. This is main form of polymer failure. Band rupture also known as scission. May occur due to the due to effects like radiation, heat energy or chemical reactions. When ex, when polymers are exposed to certain types of radiation, which may result in broken bonds and rearrangement of atoms, lead to degradation of polymers. So, tulad ng weathering, may mga factors din tulad ng radiation, heat energy, or chemical reaction ang nakaka-apekto sa polymers na siyang nagiging dahilan ng band rupture. Kapag na-expose ang polymer sa mga factors na ito, magre-resulta ito sa pagkasira ng bonds at rearrangement of atoms na siya rin nagiging dahilan ng degradation ng polymer. So, dito sa picture, ito yung halimbawa ng molecular view ng band rupture. So, at dyan po nagtatapos ang aming presentation.